So now that we've introduced the Lambert W function, what I want to do is try and gain a bit more intuition for it and really, really just understanding what, what does this thing look like? What are some of the properties that we learned from that? And the way that I want to introduce it is, is through a, um, a fact that maybe maybe you've forgotten. So, so once upon a time, we learned that if we have some function, let, let's say it looks like, uh, let's say it looks like this. Looks like some, some curve like that. Then if we want to find the inverse, well, graphically, there's a very simple way to do that. And graphically, the trick to get the inverse is that you reflect this function right here across the line y equals x. And if we were to do that in, in, in this little cartoony case, then we would have something that looks like this. So that that's the kind of a convenient fact. So we know that if we start with some, some function, if we want to get the inverse, we reflect it across y equals x. OK, great. We, you, you've probably known that since since way back in the day. Um, but that's how I want to introduce looking at and understanding intuitively what's going on with the Lambert W function. Because we know that the Lambert W function, and I'll, and I'll write this down to remind us, we know that the Lambert W function is defined this way. We say that if you have this expression here, y e to the y equals x, then the Lambert W function is what you get when you solve for y. Or, or, or in other words, Lambert W of y e to the y is equal to y. Uh, and so well, what does that mean? That means if we plot y e to the y up here, and then we reflect it across the line y equals x, then we get our Lambert W function. And so I've already done that here. Well, let's take a minute to to break down what we're looking at here. So so first, this blue curve right here is x e to the x. You see that it, it starts off, it goes to zero at minus infinity, which we expect from e to the x. It dips down a little bit below zero because of the fact that this x is going to grow faster down there than e to the x. And then it does sort of what a normal exponential would do, where uh, it blows up to the right. Okay, that's x e to the x. Uh, easy to understand. Then we have our vertical line here, or, or rather our, our, our line y equals x. And then we have our, our Lambert W function. And you'll notice that right off the bat, something interesting is going on. Because uh, x e to the x here fails the horizontal line test. That is, it dips down here, then dips back up. And so what that means is that for a certain value of y, there are two values of x for which you have a, a potential solution. And so the way that gets transferred over here is that our Lambert W function ends up being multi-valued. Uh, and so such that the, what people do in order to, to really define it is that they define two W functions. They define W0, which is this top portion right here, and then W sub minus 1, which is uh, this bottom part, this bottom piece right here. And, and, and really, the, 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 this, there's actually, you can generalize this to some w sub 1, w sub minus 2, stuff like that. It, it comes from branch cuts and complex analysis, but I don't want to go too much into that in this video. The, the point here is just that because this function x e to the x fails the horizontal line test, we get a Lambert w function, which is multi-valued. And so that already tells us something important, which is that if we're looking for values, or if, if we're looking at negative values at the Lambert W function, we have to make sure we choose the right, uh, the right value, because we can we can pick either W zero or W minus one, so long as it's within this range right here. Uh, the other thing that we can learn, and, and one one of the more important things is that, or, or so in the, in the last video, I I said something like this that. Uh, the Lambert W function was defined on the interval minus 1 over e to infinity. And then maybe I used a square bracket here. And so how, how do I get this minus 1 over e? How, how do we actually know that's the right value? Well, we can see from this plot right here that the furthest leftmost point, so that left boundary of the domain, is going to be equal to this lowest y point of x e to the x. And so if we can solve for the minimum of this function, x e to the x, then we've done it. We've, we've figured out what this furthest most left, left point of the domain is. And so uh, that's an easy calculation we can do right now. We know that uh, we have to find it where x e to the x 
is flat. So that, that minimum point right there. So if we take this derivative, what do we get? We get e to the x plus x e to the x. All right, that's great. And that's all equal to zero. Well, if it's equal to zero, we divide out by uh, e to the x. What do we get? We get one plus x equals zero. So x equals minus one, easy enough. So plug that back in to get this minimum value. What do we get? We get minus one e to the minus one, also known as minus one over e. And so using this intuition, you're using this fact, which, which maybe you haven't thought about for a while, that the inverse of a function is just the function reflected across this line, y equals x. Where eight, we were able to figure out what this leftmost point of the function is, and we were able to figure out that this lambda w function is going to be multi-valued. Uh, and so I think, I think we're going to stop here. Uh, in the next video, I'll look a bit more at some of the properties of the lambda w function and get more into some of the uh, interesting stuff that you can do with it. So I hope to see you there.